Most people know who Heracles, more commonly known as Hercules, is. They know he is the son of Zeus. He has the strength of a god, even though he isn't one. And that he eventually reaches divine status. They've seen at least one movie adaptation of his story and, if asked, will most likely have formed an opinion on who he was and what they think of him. In short, he is not just known to those who study classics. I have found throughout my time as a classics major that what people seem to know him for the most are one of his 12 labors. Whether they know of them together or just know that, hey, didn't he kill that lion? They are aware of some of his heroic deeds. As such, the video today will focus on some information we have compiled to give all of you a basic understanding of not only what Heracles did, but also how these labors reflect what people think when they speak of him and what kind of person he was portrayed as while completing these labors. After presenting the labors, therefore allowing you, the viewer, to form an opinion about his character, we will discuss the events that led up to the labors and what followed directly afterwards. The aim of this video is to share the knowledge both Sydney and I have learned in our classes on classical mythology, and then present to you our argument that Heracles, while committing both good and bad deeds, was not a black and white character. We will use knowledge from our classes in the book Mythology, Timeless Tales of Gods and Heroes by Edith Hamilton to present our case. Our goal by the end of this video is to have informed you, the viewer, enough that you can form your own opinion of Heracles based on his labors and his actions before and after he completed them. The Lion of Nemea was the first labor of Heracles. The lion was a beast no weapon could kill. Therefore, Heracles took the lion and choked the life out of it. Afterwards, Heracles returned to Eurystheus, the man in charge of assigning the labors, to present the completion of this first labor. However, he was not allowed back into the city of Mycenae due to Eurystheus' new fear of him. The second labor that Heracles had to complete was to defeat the Hydra of Lerna. The Hydra lived in a swamp and was a creature that had nine heads. When Heracles would chop off one head, the neck would grow two more to replace it. Heracles was aided by his nephew, Iolus, who brought him a burning brand to sear the severed necks so that the heads could not grow back. Once down to the original head, which was immortal, Heracles buried it under a giant rock. But it's okay, because he buried it under the rock securely, according to the book. The third labor was to bring back the sacred stag of Artemis that lived in the forest of Carinatia. While Heracles could have easily killed the stag, he instead hunted it for over a year before a successful capture. It should be noted that other versions of this story state that Heracles killed the stag out of frustration rather than capture it alive. The fourth labor was to capture the boar of Mount Arimanthus. The boar had been terrorizing the villages and cities located on or near the mountain. Heracles accomplished this task by chasing the boar until it was exhausted and then driving it into deep snow to capture it. The Augean Stables, a well-known story due to its spin-off enacted by Percy in the Percy Jackson in the Olympians book series, was the fifth labor of Heracles. The Augean Stables were home to thousands of cattle under the ownership of Augeus, and the stables had not been cleaned for years. To clean these stables, Heracles rerouted two rivers in order to have them flood the stables and clean them quickly. The Stymphalian birds are the sixth labor. These birds are said to have been a plague to the people of Stymphalus, with their enormous numbers. Helped by Athena to drive the birds out of the bushes, Heracles shot them down one by one once they were in the sky. The seventh labor involved the capture of the bull gifted to Minos by Poseidon. This labor takes place on the island of Crete. When it came time to capture the bull, Heracles mastered it, placed it in a boat, and took it back to Eurystheus. The famous man-eating mares of Diomedes, the king of Thrace, are the eighth labor of Heracles. These horses are also famous because of their appearance alongside the Augean stables in the Percy Jackson and the Olympians book series. In order to complete this labor, Heracles had to kill Diomedes, the mare's master, before he could then kill the horses unopposed. The ninth labor was to get the girdle of Hippolyta, queen of the Amazons. Hippolyta was kind and said that she would give the girdle to Heracles. However, Hera saw this and became angry as it would have been too easy of a task. So, she convinced the Amazons that Heracles was going to take their queen. When the Amazons attacked Heracles, he instantly killed Hippolyta as he thought she was responsible for the attack. Heracles was then able to fight off the other Amazons and escape with the girdle. The cattle of Geron were the tenth labor. 
On his way to complete the labor, Heracles built himself a monument to represent the labors that he had so far completed. This monument was placed in the Mediterranean in what is now called Gibraltar and Cuta, and the two rocks called the Pillars of Hercules. Once he reached Erythia, he rounded up the cattle and took them back to Mycenae. The eleventh labor was that of the golden apples of the Hesperides. The Hesperides were the nymphs of the West that were the guardians of the golden apples. This labor was the most difficult one up until this point, as Heracles did not know where the apples were. Therefore, he went to talk to Atlas, the father of the Hesperides. Atlas was a titan who was given the punishment of holding up the sky for all eternity after the war between the titans and the gods, or the Olympians. Heracles offered to hold the sky for Atlas so that Atlas could go and claim the apples from his daughters. Atlas agreed, seeing this as his chance to be released from his burden. Atlas then came back with the apples, but refused to give them to Heracles, stating that Heracles could hold the sky while he took the apples to Eurystheus himself. In this moment, Heracles had to depend on his wits, of which he is said to have not had many, and therefore asked Atlas to hold the sky so that he could get a pad for his shoulders. Atlas agreed, and Heracles left him under the sky, took the apples, and left. The last labor of Heracles involved Cerberus, the three-headed dog of Hades, who guarded the gates to the underworld. The timing of this labor coincides with the freeing of Theseus from the chair of forgetfulness by Heracles. Theseus was placed in the chair as punishment for aiding in an attempt to kidnap Persephone, wife of Hades. The task assigned to Heracles was to bring Cerberus back from the underworld and present him to Eurystheus. Hades gave Heracles permission to take Cerberus, only if Heracles could tame the dog without the use of weapons. After forcing the dog to submit to him, Heracles carried Cerberus back to Mycenae, and Eurystheus wisely ordered Heracles to return the dog to its rightful owner. Thus, the twelve labors of Heracles were complete. Now we will present you with a concise and short synopsis of the events that led up to the labors. Hera, wife of Zeus, hated Heracles because he was an illegitimate child of Zeus. She sent down a fit of madness to take over Heracles and made him kill his wife, Megara, and their children, while he thought he was killing an enemy's family instead. As penance for his actions, Heracles, who was very regretful, voluntarily entered into the servitude of his cousin, Eurystheus. Hera then urged Eurystheus to present Heracles with the above tasks, named the twelve labors of Heracles, which were believed to be impossible to complete. Unfortunately for Hera, Heracles, being a hero, completed all of the tasks. Heracles' regretfulness and the horror at the actions Hera influenced him to commit paints him as someone who we should feel sorry for. They allow us, without further knowledge, to believe Heracles is strictly a victim and nothing else. Most would also assume, then, that after the labors were complete, Heracles would feel like he'd reached redemption. However, this was not the case. Shortly after his labors were complete, Heracles went on to conquer Antaeus, a giant who used the bones of his victims to roof his house. As long as Antaeus could touch the ground, he was invincible. Therefore, Heracles strangled him while holding him up in the air. While no particular reason is stated for Heracles going after Antaeus, it can be attributed to his assuming need to be a hero. So, now the choice is up to you. Was Heracles a hero, or someone we should stop looking up to? We've given you the facts, but the final decision is yours. Hello.